Welcome to Slow Home Studio. Too many people live in badly designed houses and we want to change that. We're starting a new segment this month. We're going to be looking at bathroom design, specifically master bathrooms. Uh, this is the first of four segments and we're going to be looking at the case study project that was featured in this month's Avenue magazine. So why are master bathrooms so badly designed all the time? Well, it's because fast houses always look at size equals quality and so master bathrooms have just ballooned in size in the last 10 years and so you've got these massive floor areas, small bits of cabinetry and that's supposed to equal success and luxury and more often it just equals a pain in the neck. Yeah, they're not very well done and I think a lot of times the detailing also suffers because it's just tile slapped on walls. It feels like a bedroom with plumbing fixtures in it, not very elegantly designed. That's right. So we're going to show you what we think is an alternative to that, a slow home that we designed about a year and a half ago. It's 2,400 square feet, two bedrooms, two and a half baths, and we're going to be looking at a modestly sized master bathroom. Yeah, so here's the photo um, of the bathroom. This is one direction. Really simple design. This is not a big space. I mean, the logic of this was that basically we have a corridor that goes down, divides the two sides. On one side, we have a vanity area, which is a place to get ready with some storage. And on the other side, we have the wet area, so the tub and the shower. And when you have a sort of a rectangular shaped room, this really does make the most sense to divide your uses and then to have the space in between as the walking space for both sides. That's right. And just as a bit of an explanation of context, the, the doorway actually leads to the dressing area, which leads then into the master bedroom. We're going to be talking about that in plan in a couple of weeks. It's on a side yard, so it has a window over on, uh, on this edge, and it's located up high enough for privacy, but it still lets natural light in. And if we re reverse the view and look the other way, we can actually see, as Matthew said, that we've got one side with the walk-in shower. Combine that with the bathtub so that we'll talk about that detail. Yep. And then on the other side, we have a, uh, a kind of lime green wainscoting of tile that provides that impervious surface, which is important around the, the toilet and the sinks, and provides a kind of visual uh, side or edge focus to that to that side. Yeah, and I do want to talk about, you did mention it here, but you can see the toilet just sort of popping out on the edge of the vanity there. That's a really important detail because uh, in a small bathroom, there's often not the space to have a separate water closet room, which is, you know, it's a great thing to have, but if you're tight on space, you often have to, it's not necessary. So one thing that we try to do, just in terms of the layout and the organization, is to try to tuck the toilet, if we can, at the far end of the bathroom, at the end of the vanity, so it's out of sight, um, but still easily accessible. So there's an introduction to master bathroom design. In our next segment, we're going to be doing something that you and I love to do, look at common pitfalls. And believe you me, there are plenty when it comes to the design of a master bathroom. See you next time. Bye. If you're interested in learning more about the principles of slow home design, you can pick up a copy of our book entitled, What's Wrong With This House? It's a practical guide to finding a well-designed and sustainable home. It's available for sale on the Slow Home Studio website. It's also available for sale at Amazon.com in both paperback and the Kindle format.